Hey everyone, welcome back to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Schrout, joined by Alan Malventano. Uh, currently, as we publish this, you are in Korea. Yes, somehow. Oddly enough, the magic. magic of technology, we have brought you back momentarily to do a discussion about a brand new SSD that is launching today yep. from Samsung. This is the 850 Pro. Yes. Uh, which obviously is successor to the 840 series. We already have the 840, the 840 Pro, the 840 Evo. Yep. Now we have the 850 Pro. Uh, you can see we've got it here sitting in front of us. It is a two and a half inch mm -hmm. SSD. Same form factor as the last Same generation. Same form factor as everything. Uh, I don't know if we know anything about MSATA versions or M.2 versions of all this coming out. Have but not this heard is, yet. This is what we have for now. Um, so what's new? Why is it 50 and not 40 or whatever? <sighs> the flash is not even the same kind of flash. Okay, so we have new flash, same controller, new controller, new flash? It's still the MEX controller. Um, uh, it looks like they did some additional tweaks because the, the idle sleep of the drive is supposed to consume only like 0.2 milliwatts. Like it basically is almost off right. when the computer tells the drive to idle. Okay. Right? Um, so they kind of did some tweaks and made power efficiency more efficient, basically. But the big guy here is the flash memory. So. Chances are, if you have an SSD in your system right now and you're watching this video, your flash memory is what's called 2D flash. Okay. It's flat. It's made on a flat wafer, right? And all of the flash cells are spread out. Okay, so one bit is next to, like it, everything is horizontal. Okay. Right? As far as where your bits are stored on this memory. This flash memory is not even in the same ballpark. It's what's called VNAND. Vertical? Vertical, okay, yes. Okay, I'm with you. So it's still manufactured on a flat kind of a surface, right? Right. But it's actually kind of similar to this table. So they manufacture a bunch of layers, flat layers, and they build them up. In the case of this drive, they build them up 32 layers high. Now we have some B-roll we're going to show that shows uh, some of the videos from back when they were working on 24 layer. Okay. But realize that this, this drive actually uses 32 layer. Um, so they build a bunch of these layers up, and then they actually etch holes down through all the layers and then they coat those holes from the inside out with a couple of types different types of material mm -hmm. so they basically coat from the inside with the material that's going to be the channel the thing that's going to store the electrons in it okay and then basically so now you have like a cylinder on the inside of a hole okay right? and then there's another uh, process they do that actually runs sort of a conductor down the center to connect to all of the cylinders right okay so now instead of something that's flat that you're kind of sticking electrons into and pulling them out of and you know trying to read the, the current charge of it, you have cylinders, right? And as you might imagine, there's a lot more volume right. that you can fit in that cylinder, right? So, so we're talking about increased capacity of data per chip. Well, for the moment, we're talking about increased capacity of electrons you can store for one bit, which is important. First okay. of all, right, because that's what makes it so that the drive can last longer, has higher endurance. Ah, uh, I see. Right, for for a given process, right. So this, actually, this process is not twenty nanometer; it's actually thirty nanometer. Hmm. Okay, but the capacities of the dies is the same. It's one hundred twenty-eight gigabit die, but because the way they're stacking everything internally, hmm. it doesn't have to be spread out as far to give it the same capacity, right? It's one thirty-second of the, the width or the, you know, the, the 2D uh, distance it would need to cover, right? So not only do you use a older generation process, right? So now you can arguably crank those out faster. Right. You know, m minus the deductions for trying there's to... There's more complication yeah, there's, because of the, the, of the, the new... Yeah, the process works system. differently, yeah. yeah. Um, but again, it's an older process. You're using lithography gear that's the older generation gear. Okay. Basically, right? It's, it's built on the older generation stuff, the 30 nanometer stuff. Um, so you should be able to crank these out faster and with less complication overall, okay. right? And you're getting, since you're going vertical on the structure of it, you're getting more volume of space to store the bits, which means you can store a charge. If, if you had the same kind of leakage from a cell, th this, a cell in this tech would be able to hold the charge for longer because there's more electrons in the okay. cell, right? So we're not getting more density out of it. We're getting more... Not more density for, lifespan, for a more die. performance. Like, what, what is the benefit then to the yes. consumer that buys this product? So the performance, now, all we have from them is just kind of like 
kind of PR speakish terms, right? But the, the performance of a die, of a given die, should be twice the performance, okay. 10 times the endurance, and half of the power consumption. Those all sound like wins. Yes, right, right they do. Um, now, how does that translate into a SATA device where SATA devices were already kind of pegging yeah, SATA true. 6 gigabit, right? Well, this drive, again, is pegging just, you know, the 840 series had no problem saturating SATA on reads and writes. Um, and as far as IOs per second go, it's a little bit faster than the previous generation, but again, realize that's the same kind of controller that was in the previous generation. Okay. Right? So the controller, you know, can only go so fast, right? Um, and again, it's going pretty darn fast. We're talking like pushing 100,000, you know, 4K random okay. read. And uh, I think the random writes are like 32K, which is still a good number. Sustained um, read write speeds, though, we're hitting, what, 550? Yeah, you're just basically 550 the whole time. You're just, okay. you know, it's full speed, right? Um, Any other specific, like, performance metrics stand out about it? Like, I think we talked about, like, consistency of performance. Th that is the big thing I noticed. And it seems that with... It's either in, in the block size, and we're still researching this a little bit because it's a brand new kind of flash, but right. uh, maybe the way that the, that the actual flash is written as far as the size of the blocks, or maybe the flash itself is just so much faster that when it comes time for the controller to talk to the flash, even when a regular SSD would see like some sort of a fragmentation from doing a bunch of random writes, this guy just kind of plows right through it. Huh. So we do, I'm actually going to include a, a, a picture near the end of the article. Um, we do an HD tack pass, at the end of all of our testing. So we've done all kinds of random reads, random writes, trace testing. The idea being that it's after everything has been fragmented as much as we would normally right. fragment a it's drive. Right, yeah. for just running through a bunch of benchmarks, which is right. pretty kind of gruesome on a drive, right? Sure. And, and this thing was going, first of all, it was going full speed in HDTAC on writes, which usually a drive won't do unless it's extremely responsive, like very low latency, mm -hmm. right? So we have much lower latency we're seeing which is not so much the controller as it is the flash, because hmm. you're waiting for the flash to turn around and give you the I.O., okay. right? Um, that was one bonus, and then the other bonus is the, the, the line just goes like all the way across, and it just barely kind of hiccups at the end a couple of times. Where normally you would kind of see it... You'd see just dips down and, okay. you know, like half the right speed for a few gigabytes worth, and then would kind of try to fight hmm. back up to the, you know, to full speed. This thing, it just bulldozes through it. So as far as consistency goes, this kind of flash seems like a huge win. So in your use case, or your testing of this drive so far, we're looking at a 512 gig model here. Mm -hmm. Is it the fastest SATA SSD you've ever tested at this point? It's really close. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, once I, once I get, I'm kind of, I'm still toying around with what drives to put in for comparison, but I'm right. really having to go through and pick and cherry pick the absolute best. Sure. Right? Like in, in the iOS per second category, it was like right up there with the, with the Intel 730 which is their overclocked enterprise controller. Right. Right. If, if anything, it was kind of peeking a little over it a little bit. So you have, this is a consumer drive, and it's probably not going to be the, what was the cost per gig on the 730? It was over, like over a dollar a gig. Right. Yeah, it was. And it was fairly, fairly high. Samsung has a habit of making these drives very cost competitive. That's, right. the, that's the one bit of information as we record this video that we don't know yet, which right. is the pricing. So we don't know where it's going to come out in terms of price per gig. We do know that we have seen Samsung be very aggressive with their 840 line, yep. the base, the Pro, and the Evo, but particularly the Evo, yeah. in bringing those prices down, you know, we mm. saw the one terabyte version of the Evo selling for 399, yep. not too not too long ago. So, and the trick with the Evo was it was using triple level cell flash, which was mm -hmm. thinking outside the box. Triple so TLC flash is not something you see normally. Mm -hmm. And then to get the good write performance, they put a SLC cache on it, right? So they did some really outside the box thinking, yep. and now they've applied the outside the box all the way to like just from the ground up. Like we'll just make the flash completely different, so we can make it faster and more efficient. And what do you think about the potential of using this flash on like a PCI Express SSD? This, this, Is this that really where you would see? You would see more of. A, You'd see more of an improvement. We, I don't know what the ultimate speed is, but if they just if they're claiming two times the speed, it's probably like 400 meg per second per chip, maybe, huh. to the controller. So potentially you'd need fewer channels to get really high speed, right? Yeah. Fewer individual yeah. channels to the flash. So yeah, it's, it could very rapidly turn into a PCI Express by 8 card. Is, it doesn't matter. That's the bottleneck. Right. Anyway. Right. Like, yeah. So 
it's interesting. Like th this is a really, really compelling product. Uh, you're gonna have to go to PCPro.com and read Alan's full review, which will have pricing information, all the benchmarks yep. uh, that we that you want to see it compared to other things, and uh, we'll put the link to that obviously in the notes included below. Um, but I mean, we can't make a final decision really on this drive yeah, until we, don't we know have the what pricing it costs yet, yeah. and when it's going to be available. Those are the two things we really don't know. Yep. But I think it's clear at this point, based on the conversation, that you're pretty impressed with the performance, the performance and the technology. Yeah, as far as the as far as SATA performance, it's a slam dunk. So it's just the rest of the variables we can't plug in until the SSD event continues in right. Korea. Yeah. Right. Well, when you get back, I'm sure we'll talk about it on the podcast oh, yeah. uh, in terms of where it relates in pricing. So like I said, make sure you go to PCPro.com. If you're seeing this, the review should be live and we should have the pricing and information that you need to kind of complete our synopsis of the product there. Uh, so keep checking back here. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Go to PCPro.com. Do all that stuff and we'll have all the information for you on all of your storage needs and in, I don't know what else. Everything else, Everything. graphic cards, motherboards, we cover it all. Yep. Uh, but uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.